G'day, 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 people, and welcome to the latest epid- epidemic. Epidemic? It's not an epidemic, it's an episode. That's a different thing of The Finnovator with me, Stuart Bell. I'm a business coach. I work with financial experts to help them build businesses that better serve themselves and their clients. And today, I want to share with you a story, a podcast that I uh, came from an interview with a client that I worked with for many, many years. And damn, I had fun working with Zoraida. Zoraida Refrin is the founder, uh, chief advisor, director of uh, ZA Wealth Creation, a Canberra-based firm who do things a little bit differently. Uh, to give you a bit of a sense how differently they do do it, when we tried to put a handle on a name on it, the best way to describe this is deep strategic planning. But the story about why this matters has to do uh, with an award ceremony. Uh, not too long ago, maybe two years ago, I was uh, grateful to be nominated along with two of the businesses that I worked with, big shout out to Infinity as well as Zoraida, uh, for some of the awards at the IFA Excellence Awards. And there we were at the awards and bang, sure enough, the announcement for Innovator of the Year came and Zoraida walks up there uh, and she'd been given the award due to the work she's done that she talks about in this in this webinar, about the way she works with clients, about the the way she goes deeper and really the results she got. The real secret of this is the is the case studies that she shared which enabled her to win the award. And the fact that she worked so closely with clients in the way that she did was what gave her the ability to put forward these incredible analysis of clients the before and after. And I think that's the power of, of what you're gonna hear from Zoraida. But there we are, the rest of the day is going pretty well. Uh, we're, the right is very happy with herself with day and the night, I should say it was a nighttime thing. And the final award comes up, which is the overall winner. Everybody so far is up for grabs and sure enough, Zoraida uh, got the award, walked up there and had this kind of, has this just happened look in her face, but it was well deserved. And I think, you know what, in, uh, in an industry where we're stri- striving to, to sort of find really great ways of working with clients, I think what I love about Zoraida is the fact that firstly, she has such a commitment to this way of working with clients so deeply. Uh, her touch model is, is really high, but she still manages to find a way of outsourcing it and supporting it by external parties. But most of all, what you're gonna get from this is you're gonna hear, uh, you're gonna hear really what won the award, which is this incredible ability to identify the before and the after and the results that she has achieved specifically as a result of the advice that was provided and the actions that have both been taken by their, her and the clients to make sure uh, they get the result in a very, very tight frame of time, my mind. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoyed working with Zoraida. Uh, I think I was so pumped to be there that night when she won the award. So let's uh, hand it over. I hope you enjoy Deep Strategic Planning with Zoraida Arifin. Uh, if you haven't met Zoraida, uh, today we're going to talk through her approach to advice, which uh, is called, she calls Deep Strategy or Deep Strategic Planning. Uh, and it really is an exceptional way of providing advice. It's very much on the scale of, I think, where advice is headed. And I think uh, not only that, you're going to learn a lot about what sits in behind it, as well as uh, the team that support her as well. If you don't know anything about Zoraida, which is entirely possible, she, for someone who is so good at what she does, she does tend to be low key. There's a lot of people who are very, very, very good at what they do tend to be quite, I guess, humble at times. Uh, as you can see, she has been uh, you know, quietly awarded by a number of different people. I think that's one of the things you're going to get out of today is some of the case studies that we're going to share. And that was one of the reasons why she was so able to win the award because her case study game was just absolutely tight. Uh, when they these IFA Excellence Awards, when they tend to ask for, you know, submissions, they're looking for case studies. And having been a judge, I know that often the, what comes through is is not all that much in terms of the hard and fast. It tends to be quite, you know, fluffy. But Zoraida's is quite the opposite. Uh, I was lucky enough to be there uh, to see Zoraida win it. The first award she won was the Innovator, and uh, I wish we had a photo of her actually receiving it because the cheer in the room that went up was huge. Uh, but the second time, when at the end of it, what happens is they, they put all 16 people on screen. Everybody who's won an award from the dealer group of the year, sorry, the planner of the year to the investment manager, all, all of them, all 16, the cream of the crop. And they just called out the names, da 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 And then next thing you know, Zoraida had won it. And again, if you couldn't have seen a bigger cheer on the night, not to mention a phenomenal press shot afterwards. Give you a bit of information about Zoraida's business, ZA Wealth Creation. Uh, she works, uh, she's based out in Canberra. Beautiful part of the world down there, uh, right down there in the, uh, I guess we call it the waterfront. But her approach to advice is backed by a history, a scientific background, which we're going to talk about today. 
but to be honest, the kind of work she does with uh, people and the way she goes about it is, is, is amazing. And the whole business is, is built around it. And uh, to see her achieving the recognition, uh, yet more recognition, the success is a really good thing. So without further ado, Adieu, adieu. I don't know how you say it, but adieu sounds better to me. Let's bring up Zoraida herself. Hello. Thank you. Looking Thank you. sharp, may I say. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I've, uh, I've been looking forward to this ever since uh, we were all left in your dust at the uh, IFA Awards. Just Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to this session. <laughs> Thank you very much. How have you been? What have been, what have you, you been up to? You've been traveling a bit for the last few weeks, haven't you? That's right. I've been to Jordan to experience this, that beautiful country, beautiful people, lovely food, <laughs> fantastic history. And what, I, me, I have no idea what kind of food you get in Jordan. I, I'm, I'm, you know, is it, is it a lot of goats or is that probably a bit too stereotypical? Well, similar to Lebanese food that we get in Australia, very much like that. And what took you over there? Have you got friends who are from Jordan or what's the deal? Well, what happened was friends of ours got married in Sydney and the bride is Jordanian. So we decided to celebrate their wedding over there in Jordan as well. Love it. And uh, how, long do, how long do Jordanian weddings last for? <laughs> well, in their case, they're still celebrating. They've gone to <laughs> India to have another ceremony. <laughs> I've heard that they just go and they go and there's food. Yes. And- yeah, well, there's no drink though, right? It's just food and dancing and... That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Hey, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Obviously, um, you know, the, the, the story at the end of it is, is the, the awards ceremony, Innovator of the Year, which I think is a phenomenal, uh, you know, category to be given for, but then the overall Individual Excellence Award. But I wanted to take it right back and I'd love to understand, you know, how you got started, how you got into planning, the, 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 the route you've gone down, Uh, Talk about whether deep strategic planning was there from the start. Talk about what it is. Uh, I'd love you to walk me through some case studies and then, uh, you know, talk about the the award ceremony itself. But let's kick it off. For those who don't know you, haven't met you, who are you? What do you do? Who do you help? Give us a bit of information around that. Okay. Well, I, a long time ago, I have a master's, a master of science degree in molecular biology. (laughs) And... I was working as a plant molecular biologist at yep. the CSIRO in Canberra. Yep. Uh, well, whilst I was successful in the science area, I wanted to have a more immediate impact on people's lives. Because yep. as you know, with science, you know, we're studying molecules. And so it's not going to make a big impact in anybody's life in the next five or 10 or 20 years. So I decided that I would use my mathematical and technical skills and decided to transition into financial planning. So I I did my diploma financial planning at Deakin University, which took me four years part-time, which was really tough. And, um, And then after working with several organizations for a few years, then I decided to to start my own operations. Have you, have you met a lot of planners who've transitioned from molecular biology to <laughs> advice? Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the obvious question I want to ask, and this might be, a, this might be a dumb question. So if it is just, you know, is there any, is there any synergies between molecular biology and financial advice? Well, in molecular biology, you do not, you can't see what it is that you're studying. You know, it's not like you are studying an animal or a human being. It's all at the molecular level. So the only way you can study the processes, for instance, is to use markers. That means you need to know a way of detecting that something's happening. Okay. Okay. So I guess in the same way with financial planning, just looking at a person, you don't know where they're at. Yeah. Until you sit down with them and ask some deep questions that help them to come out with what it is that they're looking for. Okay. And do you have sort of common questions that you use to probe or do you kind of play it by ear? Well, when, when a person comes to see me, 
I've already obtained some general information about them. Yeah. We use a fact find or, or rather something called issues and concerns questionnaire. Okay. So they've given us their basic information, for example, income, expenses, what their assets and liabilities are. Yep. So when they come in, I do not ask them, what are you doing or what are you looking to do? I know what it is that they're yep. looking for overall. So the first thing I ask them is I use the Bill Bacharach approach, yep. which is to ask them, what's important about money to you? And most people are really surprised when you ask that because okay. they just go, oh, mm, uh, I think, well, I just want to be happy or I just want to be comfortable mm. or not have to worry about how I'm going to live in retirement. Yeah. So it's always that sort of like very general wants or desires I haven't had one person who said to me, I want a Maserati or, you know, uh, a palace or <laughs> nothing like that. Or I'd love, I mean, do you get a conversation like, I, want, I need investment returns of 20% year on year or is it, it, that's, it just doesn't go that way? Well, it doesn't go that way, but people will say, oh, I would like to buy five properties by the time I retire, for instance. Okay. Give me a bit of understanding. Who, like, are there any particular types of clients that you tend to work with? I think uh, John made the question, you know, what's your ideal client? Who are the people who tend to value what you do? I, I don't have a specific type of client. The main thing is they've got to see the value of advice and okay. to understand the difference it's going to make between them just going along as they are okay. versus having a financial strategy that maximizes the use of all their resources and seeing the impact in 10, 20, 30, 40 years time. So it's more of a mindset that people are, have this attitude that they, they want to do something with it. That's good. That's right. And um, I have found that sometimes people come with a certain idea. Yep. So, okay, sometimes it's, e it's easy to help them change what they were expecting because those are the people who are willing to say, I'm open to new ideas. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's go along with your process and, and see um, how we can improve our financial position. Let's, if you don't mind me, let's go back to the beginning. I mean, uh, you've just, you've decided molecular biology isn't going to be the future. <laughs> you, got, you, you got qualified. Did you go straight into working? Uh, did you create, was it straight ZA Wealth Creation or was there a path before that? I've worked with several financial planning organizations. Okay. And um, the thing is, it was the old way. You know, it's, um, there was no modeling. Uh, we were simply recommending insurances or investments. There was no tool to show someone that, if they use a combination of strategies, for instance, what a difference it's going to make in their lives in, yeah. in you know, a long period of time, of course. Okay. Um, so because we didn't have that, you need to be able to show someone the, what it is that they're going to get. Yeah, because people like to say, what do I come away with? Yeah. Well, if there is no other tool, then you'll end up, having a statement of advice and the clients are going to have a simple savings plan or an investment or super or insurances. I remember when we were at the, not the last accelerator, but the accelerator before when Naomi Christopher came and spoke and she said this thing about uh, financial advice is, is one of the stranger sort of trade-offs because you're essentially asking people to give you money in order to essentially, you know, crudely make them more money. It's the only service that does that. And to your point, if you, if you can't, demonstrate you know how that's going to work with some analysis then it, it, it particularly now where people are so much more attuned to that it, it can make it more difficult right yes that's right so this is where i'm very fortunate because i've chosen to be licensed with matrix planning solutions and we have a strategic planning software which is called prospera yep and the beauty of prospera is that 
you can model someone's financial plan right. and incorporate what their income is, how it's going to change between now and the time they retire. If they're planning to have children, you can incorporate that as yeah. part of their uh, lifestyle, if you like. And, you know, that's, that's sort of expenses they're going to have going into the future. Sounds like um, that, time when you, you, you sort of finished working for other people and you, when you became part of Matrix and you discovered Prospera, was, it, was this pre-ZA or post the establishment of your business? This was post the establishment of my business. Okay. So what I'd love to know is, were you looking, because we'll talk about deep strategic planning, but were you looking for a solution to that before the business started or did it come later? Um, I was aware that there because I've seen, I had seen a financial planning software that did long-term modeling and incorporating incomes, expenses, you know, how much the client is putting into super, all that. I, yep. And I was sort of like, that was when I left uh, a particular financial planning organization and I never found the software again. Okay. But when I was looking at a new licensee, I met with Matrix Planning Solution. <laughs> on the 2nd of January one year. <laughs> and I had a couple of people that was Atit and uh, Matthew who showed me the, the software and how it worked, you know, how it works. And they showed Prospera. Yeah. And I thought, this is it. This is exactly the tool that I want to run my business with. Wow. It's kind of like uh, that Steve Jobs moment when he was given that tour of Xerox and they showed him the, what they called a graphical interface device, which was the mouse. And instantly he, they had no idea what it was. That's right. And instantly he looked at it and went, that's, that's what we want. That's it. That's right. You can show two people the same thing and some people will go, yep, I'm going to build my business and some people won't. So let's, dump, let's dive into uh, actual deep strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Obviously, ZA Wealth Creation started. You, you had a sense that you wanted to do it a certain way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until you found the software that you were able to sort of, uh, by the sounds of it, just completely turbocharge it. Yes. For those who don't know, what do, what, how would you define deep strategic planning? Okay, well, with deep strategic planning, the first part, the foundation of it is understanding what the client is looking for. And okay. then, you know, like, for example, they'll say, oh, I would like to be financially secure. So the first step needs to be, uh, you know, to convert that I want to be secure yep. into real numbers, what we can play with, right? So okay. then we'll identify, for example, they'll say, you know, when I retire in 30 years time, I would like to have $120,000 per year net of tax. So okay. Right? And when you have that conversation, let's say a client says, I, I'd, like, I'd like to be financially secure. I want to be independently wealthy. And you go, well, great. Let's put a number around that. How much of that discussion is them having the number and how much is of you introducing the number because you've, you know it and you've seen this stuff before? Well, this is the initial part. We need to sort of agree on a number and okay. that's only to help us make a, make a start. Mm -hmm. And generally, if someone comes up with something like, a very low number, I will persuade them <laughs> to increase it Gotcha. Um, because, you know, they'll, they'll tell me if they want to travel every year, then I have a rough idea Got of, it. you know, what they would need. And oh. also it's very difficult for them to imagine what this number is going to be because in 30 or 40 years time, this number is going to grow to some ridiculous multiple and, so if I were to, to try to convert that into what it's going to be in the future, it's going to, going to be too difficult at that time. So we have to start somewhere. Okay. And, uh, you know, of course, we, we can adjust later on. So you've got clarity over what, they, what they're looking for. There's a qualitative aspect or quantitative aspect. You've finally put some numbers around it. So suddenly you've got the, the scientific aspect. What happens then? Okay, so... Then I will identify not just this long-term goal. They might have other 
goals. For example, they might come up with, oh, our children are going to be at, you know, in high school and we need to fund private school education. Yep. Or between this year and that year, we would like to buy a bigger home, for, for instance. Or in five years' time, we'll have to buy a new car, for example. Yep. So I would put that down as part of their goals going forward. Okay. And okay. I try to not just say, you know, when would you like to achieve that? We, we try to put a date, for mm. example, you know, the 1st of January 19, sorry, 2050 or something. 1st of January, yeah. 9 a.m. in the morning. 9 yeah, 9 a.m. Love it. And, and try to make it an emotional thing for them as well by saying when you you know imagine it's that date you wake up in the morning and <laughs> you now have without lifting a finger you know you'll have x dollars per year and you can travel you can do all these things wow. how would you feel you know and and people who are really really engaged will, will be whoa it's will it's gonna be amazing or you know i i i I will be so contented. You know, so I, I just try to engage their emotions as well. Gotcha. Just to dig deeper on that, because I know John has some great questions about the engagement process. How long does it take for you to actually get under the skin of not just what they want, but why they want it and the numbers? And uh, what are some techniques you use to break past either the, the barriers people have up or the fact that, you know, you'd probably know that most people don't usually think that deeply, right? No, they don't. Well, I, I usually spend one and a half hours or a maximum of two hours, you know, to pull out the goals from them. Do you ever have people who resist or do most people ah. open like a flower when you start? No, no, they just, they just go for it. It's <laughs> amazing. Sometimes I, I have to think, oh, okay, okay, they're going overboard here. <laughs> have you ever had anybody have a, a very sort of strong emotional reaction to the conversation? Um, yes, I've had people cry. <laughs> okay, well, you know, you're you know, you're definitely sort of uh, engaging with people on a very genuine level when that happens. That's right, because they've realised, you know, this has happened, and they that they're crying because they feel, you know, if they can achieve something, that would be such a an amazing thing for them. And what happens, sort of, now that you've got it all out? There's obviously there must be a process of actually putting together the advice. Give us an idea of what comes next and what are the vehicles you use to, to sort of help them achieve the, the results? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say I have, uh, you know, a couple who said we want to achieve X per year. We want to travel, you know, and spend X dollars every year and so on. Yeah. I would go away and model those, those, you know, the achievement of those goals yeah. with their current situation in other words that's the baseline scenario yeah and usually people run out of money uh you know when they are uh when they've retired for a few years because yep. we can actually model that we can show them that they've run out of money so what we would do then is that's one scenario i would create another one where i'll i'll incorporate say one strategy with it and then let's say that scenario number one and number two, and I'll then create a strat uh, scenario number three, which incorporates strategy number two plus another strategy, for instance. Right. And then I'll also add another one, which shows what if we put insurances, for example, because now I'm recommending something which is a cost to them, but I need to incorporate that. Now, with all the scenarios that we recommend, I would put my fees in, in, in those scenarios. Cool. So, so for example, one of them and they say, well, how much does it cost to you? We go, it's cost this much, but yes. everything you've seen so far, I've modeled my cost just as I would your yes. spending costs, right? That's, that's really right. Point. Upfront and ongoing, and that's all inflated, you know, it's, it's indexed to inflation as well. Got it. Perfect. So, they can see the numbers year by year and I will then have a discussion with them to show them how they would benefit from the advice. You know, as, as an example, for example, um, uh, for a client that, that um, I, I've engaged, the difference was $2 million. 
between, between what they not, wanted and where they were headed. Yeah, between where they were headed and what you know what they would achieve with the advice. So just I want to stop at that point because this is at work what a lot of people have been talking about for a while, which is that ability to sit down with clients, scope everything out, and then come back to them and go, okay. The problem you've got is a $2 million problem over 20 years. And suddenly the anchor is, oh, there's a $2 million benefit. And when you, when you talk about your fees of being, I mean, the general rule of thumb is if, if you're adding 20 times value to a client, that's phenomenal. 10 times is, is the benchmark. So in theory, you, you know, it's the whole Arthur Anderson when they used to exist, the accountant who walks into the CEO and goes, I'm going to save you $3.5 million worth of tax this year. What's that worth to you? And mm-hmm. the, uh, the CEO goes, I'd pay a million bucks for that. And the, and the yeah. accountant Right, I'm only going to charge you 200000 So it makes it a very different fee conversation, right? That's right. And, and when I've shown them that, usually people, my class would just say, well, let's go ahead. <laughs> Where do I I'm sign? I'm going to be better off by $2 million. Okay. So, and to go really granular, when you're presenting this to them, are you using uh, PowerPoint, spreadsheets? Are you modeling it on the board? Uh, mm-hmm. Is it Prospera? What's the actual delivery mechanism? We have a meeting and... Yes, in future, I'd love to use technology and present it yep. you know, in a more, you know, more savvy, technically savvy way. At the moment, I do that on hard copy, on a hard copy report. And mm-hmm. part of the reason is because I like to make notes of where the clients are getting queries or where they feel this is a, a, a query for them. But... You know, of course, in, in the future, I'd like to do it on, a, on the screen and present it that way. Absolutely. Um, but I guess it's with clients, they just, when they see so many numbers, when they see, you know, like 20 years of data, it's, it's, it's a bit too much for them. Mm. So I, I also summarize that information onto reports that break it down to five years 10 years, 15 right. years, instead of every year. Yeah. And you don't have to share if you don't want to, but what's, what, if, if you don't mind sharing, what's the range of your fees that you tend to charge for, for a new client coming on board? I've put it in my financial services guide that the range can be 6000 to yep. 20000 okay. And the reason why I've done that is I would like to make sure that if the plan gets really big, then... I'll be able to charge the higher fee. And the midpoint, the average tends to be around? Yeah, around, say, uh, 15000 Okay. Around there. And just, just want to re- re- just reflect on this. These clients come in and you show them the benefit and then you put the fee on the table and it's not, a, it's not an issue because they can see what's going to happen. Yes, that's right. Phenomenal. Uh, okay. So we talked a bit about, that's kind of your engagement process. And hopefully, John, that's giving you a bit of insight into how, the, how she digs deeper. It's about, you know, really not just taking the, you know, oh, so you want to consolidate your investments. It's like, no, 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 no. What do you actually want to do? What's, what's the emotional outcome? That's right. Pulling it out, breaking it down the steps, coming, modeling some baseline, using Prospera and coming back and showing them the, the difference between where they're headed and where they want to go and linking them with the strategies. That's right. Let's talk, if you don't mind, about the difference between what you do year after year after year with deep strategic planning versus, you know, what, what traditional planning is all about. So tell me about the ongoing pace. So after we've done the modeling and the client says, I'd like to go ahead with that strategy, you know, the, one of the scenarios which incorporates, say, strategy A, B, C, D. Yep. So we then implement that. And um, once it's implemented, we can then start producing tracking reports. Okay. So, for example, if the client had a certain amount of mortgage and they want to get rid of it in, say, half the time, yep. we can then say every month, if you had been going with your previous mortgage, that's your balance for that loan, but using this strategy is going to be less than that and yeah. this is the number. So that's your target for that month. Fantastic. And you deliver these reports by email or is it a discussion? Yeah, yeah we deliver those by email. Okay. And um, Monthly? We, yes, monthly and we get together every six months. 
What does that six monthly look like? Is it just a, here's your report, any questions, or is there a bit of a hard, you know, you're not doing this very well? <laughs> Tell me a bit about the conversations. Um, well, I, I try not to be like a school teacher person. <laughs> you know, I'll just say, well, if you are not reaching your target, then, then you won't get there, basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, because, you know, you'll be falling off in terms of direction. So no arguments because I've got a report, right? And it's, in, and it's linked to the original plan. So it's not a surprise for them. It's, it's funny, I had a conversation with uh, uh, a plan, I won't, I won't mention his name, but who was having, having to have a conversation with a retiree about they were drawing, they're spending too much money. And yet they're still like, no, I want my capital there at the end of it. <laughs> And I sort of said to him, you know what, you've, you, you've got to step aside and you've, it's just, this is just factual. This That's is like, right. I know you want the capital, so let me talk about what I see going on. You're spending too much money, which means That's the impact right. of this. So it's your choice. I, I don't mind how you spend your money. <laughs> you have to understand, if you spend your money this much, I can't get you that result. So maybe, That's right. Yeah. But, um, which is, uh, That's right. I, I believe in just sticking with the facts. I don't get, you know, emotional about any of the data <laughs> and I just hold them, you know, hold their hands and, and that's how I do it. You know, I don't let them go. The velvet sledgehammer. <laughs> um, it's funny. I remember we were having a conversation about a senior army official, which I'm not going to ask you to tell the story, but you sort of, um, you definitely gave him a serve. He, he came <laughs> up with stuff and you went, no, 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 no. This is not what's happening. And just, and he pretty much went, Oh yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I believe in, in being, uh, you know, because I think I'm clear with the results that yeah. they want. So I, I do not need to get flustered about how they are. It's not flustered. I, I, I'll just say, look, I'll hold your hand. We, <laughs> you know, if it's not good now, let's turn it around over time. Should we talk about some case studies? Uh-huh, sure. You know, that's a hell of a hell of a, uh, a, a case study, you know, a young family who successfully grew their net wealth by 25 times from 23.5 to $600,000 over a period of 10 years, paid off their mortgage 11 years sooner and saved $48,000 in interest. Boom. Uh, that's, but that's not even the, was that, that wasn't even one of your submissions, was it? No, that was when I, when I did a value of advice award um, in 2007. Okay. So would you be willing to walk us through some, maybe one or two or maybe even three of the case studies? Yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, you know that I tend to do them before, during and after. Now, what were the clients like when they, they, they sort of came to you? What did yeah. you do with them? And then what was the situation after? You, you can change the names to protect the innocent. Yes, that's right. A lot of people <laughs> know the power of actually uh, doing it this way, using the approach and Prospera. So far away. Yes. So the, the first case study, um, actually, this was my dentist. Anyway, we call her Brenda for, for this purpose. Okay. She, in 2009, when I had a, an appointment with her, you know, and I was sitting in the chair, and uh, she said, oh, she calls me Zufi, she says, can I, can I talk to you? I said, of course. She said, um, you know, my financial planner is not really helping me with my planning. Yep. Uh, do you, you know, can you, can you help me with it? I said, yes, of course. You you went, I, 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 I. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Get that thing out first. <laughs> oh, okay. Far away. Okay. So, so Brenda only had $129,000 in super at that time. And she's, you know, she's a professional. She was getting very, very frustrated. Yep. And she said that she'd like to retire at the age of 55 on $120,000 per year. And that was nine years ago. So just last month, she's retired. Okay, so that, that's the outcome of tonight. That's nine years, years ago. Yes. And, she, and she'll have a million dollars in super. Wow. Okay. And, and her husband also has, um, you know, a similar amount. Okay. So that's, that's quite a big effort, right, for nine years. So, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to pry her age, but did, that was before 55, right? Um, 58, I, I think, okay. yeah, 58, yes. Boom. So talk, talk about what you did for her. Okay. 
Well, in her case, and this is what I love the most about doing strategic financial planning. I love um, taking advantage of the client situation totally. In other words, when I do planning, I leave no stone unturned. Okay, so that's what deep strategic planning is. In her case, she had um, a, a surgery, her, bis- her, you know, her business premises. Yeah. And at that time, you know, there were new rules that came in for superannuation where you can borrow money and, and have business real property in your self-managed super fund. Yep. So I created a strategy and I said, you can do it this way, you can do it this way and this way. And she said, I'll go with the one where I transfer the business real property into self-managed super fund. Yep. Well, that strategy, I've never done it before. So luckily I, you know, this is what I do. I love talking to people who can actually help me with this. You know, the people who are technically qualified. So I set up a self-managed super fund and it was very challenging to do this because I, you know, this was the only time I did this strategy. But I, you know, to me, if that's what, if that's going to make things happen, that's what I will do. Love it's, it. It was very complex. And um, we put the property in there. So she was, you know, her business was paying the rent into the self-managed super fund. Yep. And at the same time, we use the equity they hold to invest as well. Um, of course, you know, they had insurances to back them up. Um, and so over time, with the portfolio, you know, they had also a joint portfolio and she was maximizing her super contributions as well into the self-managed super fund. And so that's where we got to when she said, I'm ready to retire. I then, you know, put everything together and, and I've actually done a new plan for them because the accountant says we, we want to do it this way and that way. And I did a spreadsheet and I showed them that <laughs> when I showed them the, my idea, yeah. my husband, John said, <laughs> I, won't, I can't say, you know, what he said, but he just went, Brilliant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> With a little bit more exuberance. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it was more exuberant than that. Obviously, and, there's, a real, there, there's a big downside to this, though, Zoraida. You had to find a new dentist. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, she sold her business now as well. Oh. So, yeah, so I'm seeing new that's, that's great. Is there, is there another case study that, that you yeah. think is particularly relevant that we could sort of yes. chat about? If this is yes. useful, let me know. If this is <laughs> useful to you, by the way, type, pop it in the box and let me know that uh, this is good. Far away. Okay, the next example is um, a, a young couple. They came to see me and they had no idea what they wanted to achieve, which was quite unusual. They, had, they have uh, two young children. At that time, their mortgage was going to take 30 years to pay off, and that will mean when they were going to be 65. Yeah. So I did a mortgage reduction strategy or... The other term for it is mortgage recycling strategy where we direct all the cash flow into the the debt using a line of credit. We use the equity in the home to invest. Um, You know, I provide them with the safety net of insurances. We did all that. And initially when I said, would you be happy if we can halve the term of your mortgage? They just said, oh, that'd be good. And, yeah, and they actually paid it off in six years. Yeah, so it's just incredible. Wow, they paid off their mortgage in six years. Yeah, yeah. So did, they, it, did they have to make a lot of sacrifices? Not really. Um, for example, the, you know, my dentist, this is what she said in her testimonial. She said, I, you know, we, we created a tailored plan and rearranged their finances. And with relatively little pain and a shift in head space, right? That, that's, what, that's what they were experiencing. It's not like they have to become mm-hmm. a different type of person in order to create wealth. Love it. Shift in head space. Shift in head space. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Love that. 
you know, obviously there's some strategic stuff in there. There's drilling down. There's some reporting uh, uh, in there as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think is one of the most important things about the way that you work with people ongoing during that ongoing engagement that you think drives them to stick with your strategy Mm -hmm. to to make the changes, to take ownership and ultimately get the result? What do you think is the number one thing that you think makes makes the biggest difference? I think, you know, I'm very aware that people do not like uh, delayed gratification. Yeah. It's easy for people to get distracted and saying, oh, I, you know, this is, you know, I, I know I'm investing so much per month, but I, you know, I can't see the results yet. So I think this is where by having the strategy plotted out for them over a long period of time and breaking it down to the numbers in real time, yeah. that's, that's what helps them to feel they are on the right track. That's, that's really important. It's kind of like um, there's a guy called Peter, Peter Tween, I think, who was a software engineer. He was, uh, uh, Tim Ferriss did an interview with him. And he told a story about how he wanted to lose weight. And all he did was right in 12 months or three, I think it was three years, 12 months, I want to lose this much weight. And he plotted on a spreadsheet his yes. weight and where he wanted to be. And That's all right. he did was measure it. He, yeah. He didn't change anything. But the interesting thing is he did because he was tracking it because he <laughs> needed a measurement. That's he right. Got, he lost the weight in nine months. And it's interesting. That's what I think a lot of advisors need to understand. You don't have to be the Oracle. You don't have, you just have to provide a benchmark. It doesn't have to be a perfect benchmark. It just has to be a benchmark that people can follow. Uh, Even if you pick three or four things which are not entirely objective, you you want to have some objective ones, but a couple of subjective ones. Um, And that that can really, really help. That's awesome. Yes. And also, my goal is always, you know, when when my clients come to see me for their reviews, they're just sort of like, okay, you know, but, but when they leave, they're really happy. Yeah. You know, there's a, a, a change in their demeanor. And, and we always hug and kiss, you know, uh, because we, I, I, I don't treat my clients as like they're just my clients. I treat them like <laughs> my friends. And in fact, whenever we have events together, you know, with a client event, people will say, oh, this is just like family. So, but you know, this is the thing I realized. I mean, you and I have known each other for a long time. We met way back when I came down to Canberra to do the FBA thing during another life. And we, we met and we've been talking for years. But you're, you're not a planner first. You're the writer first. That's right. A planner just happens to be what you do. Everybody who knows you knows you as a writer. And that's, that's really the thing that comes forward. You're not getting, you're not getting advice from a financial planner. You're getting advice from, from you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. No, and, uh, no and I love that. Well, just, um, and, a, and a dancer and drummer and... Yeah, I love the other stuff too. But yeah. to me, uh, that's, that's my goal. It, it gives me a lot of satisfaction to know that I'm making a big difference in people's lives. You know, sometimes I go, wow, this is amazing. My client is, you know, a multi, multi-millionaire and I'm advising yeah. you know, him or her. <laughs> Let's chat a bit about the resourcing because a couple of questions came up. John wanted to know about how you set yourself up to do it. Uh, I think that was another, obviously, you know, Prospera is a big part of that. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that would be a labor intensive. Talk to me a little bit about how you've resourced it up, how you've taken a fairly labor intensive process and the team that sits behind you that makes it, make, gives you the platform to do it. Well, firstly, with Prospera, I used to do the data entry and the modeling myself. Yep. But what I do now is I would um, design the strategy and work out how I'm going to create this uh, multi-pronged approach to to someone's financial plan. And I would do it on a spreadsheet so I know what it looks like and how I'm going to compare one scenario against another. Then I get the team at Prospera to do the modeling for me. Yeah. Um, simply because what takes them a few hours takes me two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how long have you, how long, when did you start doing that? For doing the modeling or? Yeah, outsourcing the modeling. Oh, I've, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Okay. And like I said, the interesting, a lot of people just continue doing what they're always doing when, uh, 
I can remember having this conversation with someone about setting up cash flow management. And we were talking about it. I think it might've been Craig. And he, I said, he says, I don't want to do it anymore. I said, well, who's, which platform are you using? He said, I'm using, uh, I think it was um, MoneySoft. I said, why don't you give them a call and see if they can do it for you? That's right. <laughs> and next thing you know, like, yeah, we can do that for you. Yeah. Often people just don't ask. They don't, they, 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 That's right. they go and search rather than go, we'll go for the most obvious, find out Prospera. Can you guys do this for me? Yes, we can. Yes. Then, That's right. That's the pricing exercise, right? Yeah, because initially they didn't have that service. And I said, can you do it for me? And so they offered that service after that, right? So they can see advisors do not have the time to plug in numbers and play with <laughs> different uh, variables. Sometimes when you know how to do something, you need to then move on to just asking, right, now I know how to do it. Who can do it for me, right? That's right. But I, um, I think for me, it was good that I did do it myself. Yeah, to begin with. Yeah, yeah, because then I understood how, how, it, how the numbers work. And if a client asks me some, you know, really complicated question, I know how to deal with it. Yep. So it, it, does, it does have that, you know, it does build up your confidence to know how the software works. I think that's a really good point to make. You know, do, do it yourself first, mm -hmm. but then, then, get, then outsource. That's right. I yes. think Chief, actually, uh, who was one of the speakers at our uh, accelerator, he made that point. He says, um, the greatest business people are the people who they know they work out how to do something they can mm -hmm. always step back into it but as soon as yeah. they know it and they've worked out the process they look for other people to do it for that's you. right so yes they can roll up the sleeves and get involved but it's something that there's it's not their default mode mm -hmm. and also for me i i feel better when i know how something works yeah me too yeah unless it's molecular biology i can live without knowing how molecular biology works i'll leave that to you <laughs> Uh, one more question, and then I'm going to ask you a little bit about actually a couple more questions. Uh, Rob has a quick question. Your advice, the writer, newly established business, uh, growing, bringing clients on board. What's the? What do you think are the maybe the one top one, maybe two things that you would recommend Rob does to engage deeper with clients and and deliver a better overall experience? Okay. Well, is Rob open to using Prospera? <laughs> Rob, are you open to using Prospera? I think he might be. Might be. Uh, if he's there, he'll probably type in the thing. But you would recommend jumping onto Prospera and using something like that? That's right. Um, yes. Because the, there is the team, David Dye of Prospera. He, you know, he, he's the person that, that you can speak to. David, um, but yeah. I'm happy to, you know, to, and, this, and we, we talked about this, if there are enough people who'd like to know more about the approach, the, you know, the financial planner's approach yep. before before jumping into the software, then I would be happy to do a workshop so, um, at some stage. Just recap, um, since the awards, the writer's been getting a lot of queries from people within her group about the approach and how to do it. And having spent so long doing it, she is um, toying around with running a, like a half day or one day workshop, which will bring everybody in. She'll run you through the approach, share some of the tools. If anybody's, uh, basically if she gets enough people in, it'll be a, a paid event. Uh, I think the, the, the fee will depend on the number of people there, but it's going to be, I think it's particularly reasonable given the value of what you're going to provide. If people are interested and they want to put up their hands for it, what's the best way of, do they email info or? Yes. The, our general email is info at ZA Wealth Creation. Beautiful. ZA Wealth Creation dot com dot EU. Yeah. EU. And that just views the subject. Mm-hmm workshop interested and that will sort of get you yes, that's right. list and be good motion. So this has been great. I want to ask, uh, if anyone's got any additional questions, pop them in, but I want to ask a question. Talk us through the double award, you know, putting together the, uh, if someone's out there wants to have an, a put, you know, get to win an award, what would you recommend they do in their submission and yeah. then talk us through what it was like to win? Okay. Fantastic. Uh, well in June, like, this year, we had this email that said you'd be nominated for an award. And I thought, oh, what, what award is that? And uh, we found out that Stuart Bell had nominated me for uh -huh. the IFA award. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so we then contacted the organizers, Momentum Media 
on what need what needed to be done. And they are highly professional. It, it's it's just amazing that uh, they've got a process. They've got, you know, you need to put in, you need to answer these five questions. Yeah. And you must answer the questions. You know, it's not like you can beat around the bush and you've only got 300 words, then you, you are required to provide supporting data, which can be reports. And I provided some tracking reports, um, testimonials from the clients and, and, and their case studies, you know, yeah. the, the matching case studies. And, um, but what I did was, which I think helped my submission was that I thoroughly, and you know, molecular biologist style, I thoroughly analyzed the questions. <laughs> I didn't just go, oh, I'll put this in, no. I checked out what the words mean, you know, how can I, you know, what does, what can that word mean? And so when I responded, I, I wrote it as though the person does not know anything about financial planning. Right. And the judges um, are people from, from, you know, a whole lot of different areas. And, and I knew that. It could, my submission could be read by someone who's not an expert yeah. in, you know, in that category. So my category was innovator of the year. And, uh, you know, I researched what does innovator mean <laughs> to make sure that, you know, when I write, it, it answers the questions. And um, it was really fantastic when I submitted it on a Friday afternoon. Of course, as you know, we all submit things. You yeah. know, when it's at the final countdown, oh, I was so exhausted. Um, I got that in. And, and then the next thing was I was notified that I was one of the finalists. Hmm. You know, it's, it's just amazing because I was glad I did the, I was so happy, Stuart, for, you know, when you nominated me for an award. But to be a finalist, I was sort of like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm a finalist. I was so excited. Then, of course, the next step was to go to the gala dinner. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> as you know, what happened was the first category was Innovator of the Year, and they listed seven finalists. Yeah. And when they called out my name, it was just like, you know, you just don't believe that. <laughs> well, I would have done that normally, but I was totally cool because I thought this is very cool. You were back there, you're like the, the speech was like, you'd, yeah, it was off the cuff, but it was, it was so calm and cool. And collected. <laughs> so it was funny because Brooke from NetWealth actually gave me my trophy and she's never done this before. And in the photographs, she and I were hugging each other. <laughs> so that was really good. Well, through the night, as you know, I don't drink much, you know, so I was, I was fine. I mean, some people might be drinking lots of champagne or yeah. wine after winning. Anyway, through the night, all the four different categories came through. I think there were 14 categories. And then finally, they listed all the winners. And by then, I was sort of like not really paying attention. Then they mentioned my name. And I said to the guy next to me, I didn't apply for that. I didn't submit for that award. <laughs> and then it turned out that that was the overall winner. And wow, I couldn't believe it, you know, and, and it, I was thinking of the words of Nelson Mandela. He says that it always seems impossible until it's done. That's so true. And so, I, I'm, so yeah. I'm so glad you applied because I think so many people don't. They get these things and they go, oh, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, and just having had the opportunity to work with you over these past yeah, few years, and see what you were already doing and being able to sort of just distill that down, really pull it out, get some efficiency in the business. I'm so looking forward to the next 12 months when you're going to grab the IP, really solidify it and just, yeah, take it to the next level. So I think, I think it's such a great story, but the interesting thing is I, I am absolutely confident that this is the prologue to, uh, to, you know, the next stage. So congratulations on that. And look, what, is it, what do they say? It's, uh, most overnight successes take 10, 10 years. That's right. <laughs> and uh, go from strength to strength because underpinning what you do is this just solid, 
solid process, as you've heard, as everyone heard today. And I think, you know, when you speak to somebody who's got a business, but underneath it is such a strong sense of what it is and what it isn't and what they do do backed by the kind of results that you've got, you know, it's, it's just easy to, to sort of, um, yeah, work with someone like you. Prospera has obviously been a big part of your success. The, the approach of really digging deep, I think, is important not to, not to lose sight of that. The modeling is obviously such a big part of it, which enables you to get commitment as well as enable you to be, make, build a profitable business. But uh, I think that the one thing that I took from the case studies is a big part of it is bringing forward that big goal in the future yeah. and making it something step by step by step. It's all, um, it's, it all seems so simple, but most people don't do it. So the fact that uh, it's all laid out there, I think it's, it's really right. good. So Ryder, you tell us a bit about this workshop. What, what's, uh, what, what's the plan or what's the, the idea and who, who do you think should potentially consider coming to a workshop like that with you? Well, I think um, I haven't got it sort of worked out fully yet, but I, I can imagine that there may be people who are looking like I was in the very beginning, you know, like how can I create a plan, make it fee for service, very transparent, uh, professional, and, and you can help people who really want to improve their financial position. Yeah. And learn, I guess, how to have that conversation, how to charge the kind of fees, but more importantly, how to deliver the kind of value and as well as the prospera thing sounds like a really big That's part. right. And um, there's, there's also someone like David Dye of Prospera. He, he could also be part of it and show how it works. Um, David D-A-I or? David, yeah, D-Y-E. D-Y-E. So yeah. he's from Prospera. He's the geese. Awesome. What, what's up? What, what's the next, what's the plan up next for you? What's, um, what's the next hurdle? Um, yeah. What, what, what do you think people should pay attention to that's coming up from well, you? Well, I, 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 I've had, um, you know, matrix planning solutions approach me to say, look, there are other advisors who are interested in strategic financial planning as well. And I would love to help people who would like to do something, you know, different. It, it's, it's, it's a bit more work, but I think when you do something like this, you feel that you are really adding value. Yeah. So I think, you know, going forward for me, uh, I'd like to, of course, um, make my processes smoother, you know, using the human touch, but, but, you know, using technology because there's a time when we can't just be, you know, human touch all, all the way. So, yes, I'd like to improve my processes. So it's an ongoing thing. That's the sort of project we are working with you. Yes. Good, yes. Perfect. This has been great. Zoraida, what's on, I, like, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, what's on for the weekend? Which is uh, still three days away, but... Yes. Uh, well, before the weekend, Friday night, I'm performing with my group. My group is called Hit and Miss. A Love group it. of girls. <laughs> and we do African drumming and African dancing. And is there a place in Canberra they can come to, to yes. see you? Yes, that's at Garima Place in the city. And it's called uh, Reclaim the Night. Oh, it's like Reclaim the Streets, but... With the night. Reclaim the night, yeah. So I'm doing that. Yeah, and then... I have very fond memories of the last time we went out in Canberra where we took, I, I got a bit of a tour of all the, the secret bars, the vault. <laughs> so I hope, I hope you have a great weekend. And thanks again for this. Thank ride. you. Um, and as I said, if anybody's interested in learning more about that, you can check out zawealthcreation.com.au or email the writer if you want sort of an introduction to David. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think you might be interested in learning a bit more about how to take everything she's learned and fast track sort of what she does uh, and probably well, hopefully uh, generate some of the same results for the, for your business and also for, for clients. So, right. Leave it there. Zoraida. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. But thank you for coming. It's been awesome. And uh, on behalf of myself and Zoraida, hope everyone has a great end of the week and I'll speak to you soon. See you later. Bye now. Bye. Hey there guys and girls. I hope you enjoyed that episode of uh, the Finnovator with Zoraida. Uh, how amazing are those case studies to be able to kind of just pin down the scale of the change and I think it's a real 
uh, a real credit to Zoraida that she's able to do it. And I can kind of see the approach and the way she does it just getting easier and simpler and uh, with technology over these coming years. Uh, yeah, that's it from me. I just wanted to say once again, thank you so much for listening to The Finnovator. I hope you're enjoying it. My aim is to keep it coming. Uh, to do that, I would love uh, your help to sort of put the word out there. Uh, and of course, if there's any topics you'd like to hear from or people you think I should talk to, it's much easier to, to the fuel people's uh, uh, listenership when uh, I know what people want. Other than that, that's it from me. I hope you've got a great week lined up. I hope business is good. I hope, uh, hope you're happy, healthy, and, and uh, looking forward to what's coming. Uh, but in the meantime, have a great week. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Ta-ta.